Hey, what's up? This is your girl, Taylor Wilde. Welcome back to Wild On, season four, season finale. Can you believe it? Four seasons. Four seasons, two years, over 50,000 downloads. I cannot thank you enough, Wild Ones. You've been on this crazy journey with me. You've watched me come out of a 10-year retirement, get hit by a Mack truck by my personal life, brush myself off, get back up on it, and now I'm back on Impact Wrestling TV. Hopefully you are enjoying this wild ride, because I know I am. Today we're going to mix things up completely. I'm going to be interviewed by Impact Wrestling's very own backstage interviewer, Gia Miller. So here we go. Season finale, season four, Wild On. Let's get wild. Hello, everybody. My name is Gia Miller. If you have been around here for a while, you know that I did an episode with Taylor on Wild On, but now the roles are reversed. I get to interview you. I get to interview you, Taylor. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you so, so much for taking the time out of your very, very busy schedule. This is so awesome. This is so special. For whatever reason, this might be someone's very first episode, which what what a first episode to listen to of Wild On. So if they have no idea how they got here or who you are, <laughs> tell me, who is Taylor Wild? Okay, well, Taylor Wild is the wild child of professional wrestling. I had started my career on television back with WWE in 2007. I was in the developmental territory. So I could have been seen on a house show for SmackDown, but you probably wouldn't have recognized me because I was wrestling as a Japanese boy. And then I was part of probably what was the most pivotal point in TNA history when the knockouts between 2008 and 2011 had this incredible run of diverse female professional wrestlers. I was the most Canadian American baby face Gwen Stefani knockoff kind of professional wrestler you'd ever we see. We love it. <laughs> and I took 10 years off. I became a Toronto firefighter. I've been doing that for almost nine years. I went on a deep spiral of self-reflection and healing after some pretty traumatic life events. Mm. I've come back, Taylor Wilde, the badass, the witch, the most authentic version of who she is, and my character is starting to really evolve in the short two months I've been back on Impact. And yeah. somewhere in amongst those two years, I decided to start this podcast and YouTube channel, what you're listening to right now, Wild On, to focus on the amazing women I get to call my friends, my sisters, my family, my chosen family, who not only are involved in the world of professional wrestling, whether they're like you, Gia, you do the backstage stuff, you do the seamstress, you do the glitter, Gia. Ja Jill of all trades. Jill of all trades for <laughs> anyone who crosses her path. Like, you just watch out. She's amazing. But, you know, a lot of us wrestlers, we're moms, we're artists, we're musicians, we're entrepreneurs, we're academics, and there's not enough focus on it. So that's why I started this show. And now the roles are reversed. Gia's going to ask me questions about the intimate side of me that maybe our listeners or new listeners know nothing about. You hit the nail right on the head. Like you get really to the nitty gritty when you talk to people on the show. And so now it's it's time for everybody to really get to know the nitty gritty all about you. And you are just so interesting. I feel <laughs> like everybody, every time I talk to you, I find out something new that I'm just like, oh my word, that, can she fly? Like, I, I really think one day you're just going to start flapping your arms and you're just going to take off. I but hope so. Anyway, so let's, I, I want to start with like the basics of the basics. Like, okay. You are a proud Canadian. You said you're from Toronto. I need to know. These are this is this is a really tough one. Yeah. What are your thoughts and feelings on Drake? Okay. Good question because this is very controversial for people from Toronto. It's a love hate mm -hmm. thing. Okay. So Drake started off his fame 
for uh, sorry in a little show called Degrassi, which was <laughs> uh, filmed here in Toronto. That had like cult, a cult following of mainly Canadians. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then it was remade. So he was like, you know, just like, um, just, just an actor. He wasn't like Drake the rapper that we know. Uh, I wasn't very into that show. I was in the 80s version of the show. I was a bit too old for the remake. So I didn't know that side of Drake. But let's not get it twisted, twisted at all. Drake is fucking amazing. I all right. love Drake's music. Like, I think he can do no wrong. Sure, <laughs> he's, like, got a lot of hype, but he's a businessman. He's talented. He is handsome. And, like, he's just living his best, most authentic life. And I can only respect that. And, you know, he's representing the six in, like, a really cool, unique way. So I'm, I'm all team Drake. Okay, awesome. <laughs> if this is someone's first episode, this is a great first one to listen to. You're getting to know your host right now. Right. I need to know this is uh, one I, I don't really um have a have a have a dog in this fight here, but I feel like it could say a lot about you. Are you Blue Jays, Raptors, <gasps> or Maple Leafs? Okay. Good. Oh, Gia, you're getting right into it, eh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I grew up in a hockey family. So I am Maple Leafs. I'm a hometown girl, 100%. The Leafs have consistently disappointed us since they won their <laughs> last Stanley Cup in the late 60s. We probably have the most expensive uh, ticketed prices for hockey tickets. It's constantly sold out, but it's my it's my favorite sport to watch to play and I'm a hometown girl I love the Leafs my family loves the Leafs there ain't no Habs fans in here so yeah I'm gonna go with the Leafs although I did just go to a Raptors game with a guy uh, but he's since ghosted me so ah, well no more no more Raptors for me hey maybe that was a sign maybe maybe it was a sign it was absolutely a sign you touched on this a little bit about like uh, you you like to get into more than wrestling on your podcast. Yeah. Why would someone who's not a wrestling fan tune in every week? I obviously have lived a long life in professional wrestling as a host of the show. I know what it's like to be on the road. I know what it's like to train, to perform, what it takes on your body, how it affects your personal life. But I think because I'm a sister, because I've been in the business so long, all my guests have you know, that family connection with me. Mm -hmm. And wrestling is what bonds us. So oh, yeah. we don't really want to talk about wrestling. We want to have a bit of a catch up. So I think what's different about Wild On than any other professional wrestling podcast is the simple fact that we want to get into catching up. We want to tell old road stories. We want to talk about what's affecting us now. Marriage, dating, what are you listening to? What are you watching? You know, we spill a little tea from time to time. We get into the hot gossip backstage and it's really you're going to see like a really light airy version of everybody because one of one of my two skills I'd say as a very outed witch is I'm an empath and I'm pretty intuitive and I can read the energy in a room so I know how far I can push people in a really playful way and they end up saying things that they probably wouldn't say on a normal podcast with just an interviewer because they know I'm a safe space and I would never corner them into anything exactly they wouldn't say in a social setting so you're always going to get a little bit of something you know extra special because it's just this comfortable conversation yeah absolutely I mean when I did your podcast it was like obviously the family old the sister relationship it was so easy to let your guard down and just be who you are and you get to see who you are it's it's very it's literally like you're just sitting on the couch hanging out with your totally. sister. So. And that's that's what I want it to feel like for listeners because that's what I'd like to listen to when I'm listening to like my favorite musicians getting interviewed. I don't want to hear the same shit. Like, tell me about your day. Where, where did you go to work out? Like, what do you like to do when you travel? Like, I want to hear the little things. And since you mentioned music, that was my next question because music is like a huge topic on this show and I'm even wearing my Guns N' Roses band t-shirt today because I'm Adrian. feeling pretty wild. <laughs> do you play any instruments? Are you musically inclined? Do you like to sing? What is your involvement with music? Oh, I love to sing, but it sounds like a cat being stepped on. 
it's <laughs> not good. As for the listeners that have been on this journey with us for four seasons, I always sing at the end of my podcast because I'm terrible at it. It's like my worst nightmare being on a stage, being given a microphone and say <gasps> sing. I actually did vocal lessons when I was 11 or 12 years old because I so desperately wanted to be in a band and I wanted to sing because like music is like in my veins. I'm just Mm -hmm. so fucking shit at it. But I am a classically trained cellist. I played from grade six all the way through high school and then I actually was going to go to university and do the fine arts and play cello in university but I was really kind of making strong strides in wrestling and I just kind of took more of a general BA and I only got through a year before I was picked up by WWE so it it was all the right decision and then as a teenager when I really knew like girl you cannot front like a riot all girl band like your voice (laughs) is just it's not happening so I learned how to play the drums so I could play the drums pretty shit just enough I have an ear for it and because I was classically trained to play cello I could read music so I could just like make it work that's awesome like like I said I (laughs) learn something new about you every single time (laughs) I talk to you we like to talk about more than wrestling but there are some there's some interesting uh some wrestling stories we want to get into that (laughs) <laughs> for some people in wrestling like they are lifelong fans they grew up watching it and for yeah. some people they didn't and they just kind of find it or it finds them which sure. was your case did you grow up loving it or was it just something that you were like oh yeah i think i'm gonna do that it was both actually okay so I grew up, I wouldn't say conservative, but it was the 90s and my mom didn't allow me to watch The Simpsons, Married with Children, Jerry Springer, or Professional Wrestling. Those were all kind of looped in the same. But every, I'd say like two Fridays out of the month, I'd stay at my cool aunt's house for a sleepover on a Friday and she would do crafts with me and she was really like punk rock in the 80s and wore like Fredericks of Hollywood clothes and really teased like blonde platinum blonde hair and like that's probably where I got a lot of my fashion an icon yeah totally like leather PVC boots thigh highs oh yes oh and her husband my uncle was a die hard professional wrestling fan so whenever I stayed over on the Fridays we'd like do whatever we're gonna do but then he'd have me sit on the couch with him and watch pro wrestling so I was always exposed to it like on a regular basis in this like secretive way which made it even cooler oh yeah because... it, was, it was the rebel <laughs> child started young totally started young <laughs> like as a teenager i would say probably 14 15 years old i started dating a guy again super fan and i liked it mm-hmm. but it was the era of edge and christian and trish stratus like that mm-hmm. attitude era so i was like these people are from toronto or orangeville like they're badass they kind of look rock and roll and i thought i've been a whole like I've been an athlete my entire life this would be so amazing and I didn't even know where to look it just so happened that I was working at a parks and rec like a city run fitness gym and the tech who fixed the fitness equipment came up to me and he was an indie wrestler and I had no idea and he I guess he noticed that I had like Trish Stratus pictures on my binder because I was manifesting before I I love it manifestation was (laughs) and he said like I train at this professional wrestling school in Toronto I know they're always looking for women you must you you're obviously athletic you should give it a try and I was like well shit (laughs) okay (laughs) And, you know, it just, you know how it goes. I worked really hard and all the stars aligned and I got the right exposure and I had the right people in my wheelhouse and kind of a year and a half, max two years later, I was hired by WWE. Wow. What a journey. And and honestly, it's kind of similar to me. It was just kind of a, a yeah, this is what I'm going to go for and this is what I'm, I'm yeah. going after. And I loved it from a kid. And then Within two years, I had my job at Impact, which is just so crazy how quickly it can happen. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not great at math, but you were 22 years old when you won the Knockouts Championship. That, I I can't even imagine that because I'm 24 and I'm constantly reminded of just how (laughs) young I am. So I could not imagine being 
22. That makes you the youngest knockout champ in history. No one's even come close. I think Jordan Grace is the closest, and she's 25, 26. But looking back on that time, would you do anything different? I was so fucking young, Gia. Yeah. <laughs> like, and here's the thing. I was... I've always been really goal oriented and I was like, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it whenever it comes and like the sooner the better because I'm ready. But you don't know who the fuck you are at 21, 22 years old. No. And because I've always been mature for my age, mm -hmm. no, one, I, d I honestly don't think any, it didn't, no one questioned it. I don't think anyone had any idea of actually how young I was. It just didn't come up in conversation and no one talked about it. So I look back and I think, God, what an amazing journey I had. And it, I was so fortunate to live the life I did and travel and perform at such a high level so young. The, I'm doing now what I wish I could have done then, but I couldn't have done then what I'm doing now because I had to go on this journey. Yeah. So it was just part of, it's part of my story. And, you know, the best thing that I could have done back then was self-advocate more, mm -hmm. but I didn't know who I was. So I didn't even know what advocating for myself was because I didn't know who I was. I'd grown up in wrestling yeah. at a high level where everyone is telling you who you're supposed to be mm -hmm. and what box you're supposed to fit in. And I knew I didn't fit in that box. I could put on the makeup and I could tease my hair and I could look like it, but I didn't feel it. And it showed for years like people always said in the comments like you know there's just something awkward about Taylor Wilde or she just it seems so strained and I'm like yeah no shit I don't know who I'm supposed to be because I keep being told who I'm supposed to be and that's not it but I don't really know so yeah and, and looking at who you are now it's so authentic it is just the absolute opposite of awkward it is it's so crazy how that and, and you said it like that journey needed to happen it needed to happen the way that it was supposed to and I am a huge believer in that like there's yeah. lots of good bad and ugly things that happen in our lives but it's yeah. gonna happen the way it's supposed to happen it's gonna give you the tools and the knowledge that you need or totally. that maybe you didn't think you were ever gonna get it you just never know how it's gonna oh, go yeah. you sure. were 22 years old took 10 years off, came back. Now we are seeing the authentic who she is, all of her witchy badassery, <laughs> Taylor Wilde. But there's a lot of other women surrounding you. They say it takes a village. Tell me, oh, yeah. the knockouts then, back in 2008, versus the knockouts now, what is different? What's the same? How has that atmosphere changed? I would say... Um... Because the way the business was wired, let's go back 10 years, because there was so few of us, women were really pinned against each other because mm -hmm. diversity wasn't encouraged. You weren't pushed to be who you were supposed to be. You were pushed to be the norm, which was mm -hmm. you were either the good girl, Trish Stratus, 90s porn star, blonde, big boobs, or you were the mm -hmm. bad guy, the visible minority, or the brunette, like Betty versus Veronica kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't fit exactly into either of those two things, it was really hard. So you had a bunch of girls who were very same, and there was only so many spots to fill. So I think from a business perspective, there was probably a little bit more cliqueiness, a little bit less sisterhood-ish. But I, I mm -hmm. mean, like a lot of these women, and I don't mean that in a shady way at all, because a lot of, of these course. women I came up on the indies with, these are girls that I take a bullet for. We had an amazing time, but there were literally so few spots available for us. So it, what I will say in the impact locker room today is diversity is beautiful. Diversity is encouraged. We love being different versions of different kinds of women that represent the demographic of the world, North America. And it feels like the energy just feels more relaxed. Like we're in this together to make it bigger opposed to we're in this for ourselves to see how far we can go. And also, obviously, the talent pool has it has grown as diverse as the looks. And women were talented 10 years ago. 
but there's just more of us and there's oh more, yeah there's more places for us to go like japan mexico we're always options because there's more there's more indies to do there's more traveling to do and i will just say professional wrestling for women has just grown in the most beautiful organic way and women are really supporting women in 2022 and i can't yeah. speak for any other locker room but i really feel like at impact the knockouts all band together and we really support each other's growth and what's good for somebody being the knockouts champ or being knockouts tag team champ is good for us and it's good for business and we're making this bigger for all of us I totally agree with that. Like I was in a sorority in college and I was almost let down about like how like uh, clicky and not right. sisterhood it was. And I say all the time that I found the sisterhood that I thought I was going to get in the knockouts locker room. Oh, I interesting. am always surrounded by big sisters and they really do help you grow and they encourage yeah. growth and diversity and being who you are. And like you said, at 22, you didn't know who you were. This job requires you to travel a ton. Do you enjoy the life on the road? Do you like all the places you get to go visit? How many have you, how many countries have you wrestled in? Cause I mean, already to America and, and Canada. I really enjoy impact schedule right now because it mm -hmm. allows me to have the counterbalance of having my job as a first responder, a firefighter. I get to be a mom. I get to be around my family and I could do as many or as little indies in Toronto or wherever really that I want. Yeah. And it's brought me back to a place where I get to travel around North America again, which I haven't done for a long time. And I truly, truly miss the travel. What I didn't miss is as an early 20 something year old who didn't know herself, you know, you, when you're on the road full time, you don't really have time to have substantial like romantic relationships because if they're mm -hmm. at home, you're gone all the time. And if they're on the road, they're kind of like holiday romances unless you live together when you're off the road. Yeah. Because I had been do like I had been hitting it hard since I was 19. By the time I hit 25, I just felt lost in this what was like a nomadic gypsy existence, which was really like cool and like I, I just wanted to live out my suitcase, really burned me out. Yeah. Come 25. So I traveled a lot more in my early 20s and I loved it. But you need balance. Like that's the key to everything, right? Is is balance yeah. and having roots and staying grounded. And I wasn't grounded for a bazillion different reasons. But that being said, I got to wrestle in South Africa. I got to wrestle in Mexico. I got to wrestle all over the UK, Germany, a few places in Europe. I think I've been to almost every state. There's a few that I haven't been to. And I don't know if we ever even go to those states. But I'm hoping... <laughs> We knock them off eventually. <laughs> and there's some places in Europe I'd really love to go and perform in still. What about you? Do you like the life on the road? I, you know, I'm kind, I kind of in the same way. I do like traveling. I've always been like love travel. I like flying. I like driving for, I love road trips. I did a road trip with my best friend from Orlando, Florida to Tucson, Arizona. No oh, stops. We just wow. trucked straight through. We only stopped to pee, eat, and gas. <laughs> But it now that I've been doing it a whole ton, yeah, I'm like, man, I really love my two weeks off. I love my time at home when I when I yeah. get it because I was just we just did like an overnight drive last weekend, and those just stink. Thanks. They suck. I it, at about once I see the sun start coming up, I start to get real angry because yeah. I'm like, I haven't slept yet, and I totally. love my sleep. Yep. I'm so that's the only thing that I'm not fond of, but Fair. I do love getting to like see all these places that I may not have, may not have been able to see otherwise. Right. I get to visit Impact will be in Canada next year. Yes. And I've been to Canada before, but I've never gotten the opportunity to work in Canada. So oh. I'm very excited about that. And then I can take you out after the shows. You mentioned having romantic relationships and things like that, which we we know is so difficult in the world of professional wrestling, yeah. just in life in general, take wrestling out of the equation. Yeah. 
but you talk about dating and being single a lot. Like, what is your current status? Single. (laughs) All right. Single and dating. Because here's my thing with talking about being single, because obviously we've just come out of a two-year pandemic. Mm -hmm. Everybody has gone through their own personal growth journey because the pandemic was a hard restart for everybody, whether you wanted it to be or not. And I think we're all in this really weird place where no one really wants to commit. Grass seems greener. Everyone's Mm -hmm. exploring their options. But for me specifically, I was always married when these dating apps launched. And I literally went from serious relationship to serious relationship. So as a Mm -hmm. 36-year-old single mom, I'm entering the world of dating online and there's just like I've read books on it (laughs) published by like Harvard psychologists because it's actually like a whole mindset and I'm to the point now where I actually I'm inherently very introverted like and a lot of people don't get that but I know you get it I love performing I love I can be on I know how to be extroverted and I generally do love I love my people. Yeah. Um, But the idea of meeting a complete stranger, sitting across a table from them, and basically having like a a personal job interview is my idea of hell. (laughs) Um, So So much anxiety. So much anxiety. And I'm also sober. Like I don't drink anymore. I haven't drank for almost a year. I have no intentions of ever going back. So that's something that a normal person would like take the edge off with. Yeah, yeah. Liquid courage. So I've actually started, I think, dating more often and different types of people literally just as another person piece of my journey because there's generally like a lot of really good people out there and I think I don't know it's just nice to get to know different types of men because I didn't forever I just got into relationships for really immature factors for lack of a better term like I thought he was hot so let's like get married (laughs) (laughs) that worked out real well let me tell you so yeah so I am single dating I'm open-minded. I don't know what I want because I know that's like a question on those dating sites. It's like, Mm -hmm. are you looking for a short-term or a long-term or casual? And I find that question really difficult because I assume that everyone is on the same page besides people who just want to fucking hook up is you're looking to catch a vibe. Like you're looking to match energy. And if you match energy, you take it as far as it will go. And then- Like, if you would just end up being friends with someone, then that's yeah. fine, too. Like, if we just end up talking, we have a lot in common, but we're not romantically compatible, then that's okay. Like, we could still be friends. Yeah, and that that's basically where I'm at because I am, I am a boundaried, secure woman these days. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and it's not like I'm not sitting on my high horse like I'm perfect and I have these high standards, but I want to build real relationships. I want to build a real relationship. So that's where I'm at. This is something that like, I feel it's very unique to people like us that are in any sort of public eye. Yeah. Is it tricky when it comes to, especially online dating with creating that profile? Like, do you put out like that? Yep. This is me. It's Taylor. Well, the professional wrestler, or are you like, this is, Chantel, this is the firefighter this is the mother like how do it it gets a little weird which which version do you get it gets weird and i have to be careful not that i'm honestly worried about any fans or anything like that because like if you're a fan and you see me on a dating site shout out give it a try like whatever no you know it's that's not it at all because really all i'm hearing is commonality we both like wrestling um yeah (laughs) But what I do, I'm really cognizant of the fact that as media, social media, television people, there is an image that you're playing into on screen. Like you're Mm -hmm. not just like Chantal sitting around in sweatpants, like crushing Netflix and snacks. Mm -hmm. So what I don't do is I don't put on any of my social media pictures on my dating sites. I Mm. put... Pictures where I'm literally wearing either no makeup or little makeup. I try to stay away from filters. I I do list 
my real job, firefighter, or I put first responder. I bring up professional wrestling pretty early on, like if we're going to go on a date. Um, and I just try to not put false advertising out there because sure. like how I look right now, this is not how I walk down the street. Like I've got contour. I've got smoky eyes. Like this mm -hmm. is totally false advertising. You are going to get this 1% out of the month. So I don't want to attract a guy that's looking for that type of woman, which is beautiful. Like fucking all the power to you. If you do yourself up every day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's just not me. So it is very tricky. And then there's that counterbalance where it's like, well, why don't you just date in wrestling? And I'm like, oh, that comes with a whole other. Yeah, it's a whole other can of worms. That's a whole other <laughs> there's podcast. Not, there's not. Yeah, there's not enough time to even go there. But, you know, dating other wrestlers is easy in terms of commonalities. Sure. But it gets so messy because our world is so small. Yes, it is. And, and I, for me, I always said like, I feel like it's going to have to be someone in the business because I can't have the constant conversations of why you're gone or, or yeah. I don't want, I want there to be a mutual understanding and this mutual yeah. love of this thing. So it's not like, Oh, I'm prioritizing my career over you, even though that might be what it is, you know, it, it because yeah. we still have to put ourselves first. We have to put our goals and our careers first, but it's also it gets tough because if things don't go well, you still have to be coworkers, and it's like uh, people in an office can't work together for that reason. Yeah, and, and, and but it's we, it's like it's the wild west in um, it's the in, wild in dating, west in wrestling and dating online. It's it is it is really the wild west. Is there any astrological sign <laughs> that is a deal breaker? Like what what are you look at someone's birthday and you're like, oh, nope, that's a, I can't, I can't tolerate an emotional Pisces. That's me. I'm an emotional Pisces. <laughs> I, or I can't I take a, a Scorpio or a Gemini, whatever. What, is there anything like that for you? Okay. So I'm going to jump right into the like straight old witchiness. So we all have our sun sign and mm -hmm. that's dedicated to the day you were born. So you're a Pisces. Yeah. Now we also all have a moon sign, which is actually how you present in relationships or the people you're closest with. And that's dictated by where the moon was when you were born. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's based on where you were born, basically. So for me, I'm an Aquarius with a Leo moon. So your moon sign. So I really honestly, like I don't mess around when it comes to that astrology stuff, not because it's a deal breaker, but because you get a blueprint for how oh, yeah. someone shows up in their life. For that reason, <laughs> <laughs> there's no sun sign that I would write off. But as far as someone's moon sign goes, how they present in relationship, mm -hmm. how they present emotions, I can't do a Virgo moon. Ooh. I can't do it. I can't. I'm. I am a like so Aquarius is air. I am a Leo rising and a Leo moon. That is fire. I am fire and air and my fire keeps burning because there's more air mm -hmm. fueling that fire. And I am like independent and creative. And I'm like, look at me, look at me. And like, I like to do my own thing. Like I was born rebellious and a Virgo has to c fucking control yeah, everything. Very strict. <laughs> And like very regimented and it's not even regimented about their life. It's about your life and how you guys see relationships. So I will say, I'm sorry if you have a Virgo moon, but it's just not yep, going to work. Sorry, no chance. <laughs> when I tell people that me and Austin are both Pisces, they go, oh, <gasps> really? <laughs> they're, they're like, oh, that must be a like lot, a lot of, of crying. I'm like, it is. But I needed that. I, I needed someone that got it. Because I hated explaining, like, or I hated hearing, oh, you're so sensitive. You're just so sensitive. Mm. And it's like, no, I am very empathetic. I'm very compassionate. I'm very passionate. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> I need someone that understands the same type of emotions. And he feels all the same big feelings that I feel. So it's it's very easy for us to level with each other. Now, Fights can be pretty big, but makeups are even sure. bigger. I, I've said oh, that yeah. 
every fight has always it's never ended in well well we're just we're just gonna go separate ways like it's it's just whatever we'll just leave it alone and get over it it always yeah. ends up in us coming back together and i always feel like we're stronger for it so yeah. i i i i love me a, i love me an emotional pisces oh wild ride could it be wild ride can't get up by james james career continues just barely hanging in there but the i want i want to get into the to the witchiness i want to get into the okay. spirituality because like <laughs> this is so fascinating to me and i feel like for people who don't know a lot about it it, it can be very fascinating because i think a lot of people have this preconceived notion of like what being a witch is and that's yeah oh boy oh boy oh toil and trouble uh over your little cauldron are putting spells on people can you tell <laughs> for the people because you've been talking about this for over a year uh, can you yeah. tell the listeners what being a witch means what is witchcraft Sure. Okay, so here's number one. It is subjective. It is a frame of mind. It It is an independent practice, and it's what you resonate mm -hmm. with. So there's so many different ways to take it. So number one, I do not abide by any group organization that views themselves as a religion. Mm -hmm. I am not Wiccan, and I am not pagan. I have no problems with them. It just doesn't resonate sure. with me. For me... Witchcraft is a way to stay grounded and to do, you know, the introspective work you would do in therapy. But instead of kind of pinpointing what your problems are, which I think are very important, and I wouldn't get to this part in my witch practice if I hadn't done 10 years of therapy, but you're really, really trying to build towards your highest, most divine self. And where the witchiness comes in and spells is just what I like to call spicy psychology. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a lot of, I wouldn't even say common sense, but it's stuff that isn't really magical, but it is magical. Sure. So one of my favorite authors, she said, your word is your wand. And mm. what that means is what you say, what you feel, what you truly believe, the energy you put out into the world will become what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. So if you wake up every day and you're like, my life is shit, I'm overweight, I'm always tired, you're putting out negative vibes into the world mm -hmm. and that is what you're attracting back. When you wake up and you think, oh, you know, yesterday was shit. And let's be honest, you have shit days. Yeah. But you wake up and you say, you know what? I am really fortunate. I have a roof over my head. I have my health. I have a passion. I'm going to get up today and I'm going to be the best version of me. Yeah. And starting my days, I like to start with gratitude. And I'll write down three things that I feel very thankful for. And that's part of manifesting because you literally change the energy within your body mm -hmm. and how you feel when you think about just three things you're really fortunate to have. Another part of my practice is I cleanse my space every day mm -hmm. because I'm one of those weird girls that grew up totally attracted to and have had multiple experiences with the paranormal. Ghosts love me. Oh, yeah. So oh, one, of my, one of my best friends was a ghost years ago. See, you yeah. get it. So when you're vulnerable, when you're emotional, when you're a Pisces, or you're just an open, innocent, like a child, every child is mm -hmm. innocent. But when you're open to that side of the universe, they know and they're attracted to you and they'll try to make themselves known in any way. And that's positive and negative. So I cleanse my space. I cleanse who, you know, cleanse myself. Mm -hmm. I cleanse the energy. Uh, I read my cards every day. I've, you know, really deep dove into my birth chart and you learn so much about yourself. Yeah. And it's not be all end all, but it's a framework for, you know, learning about who you are. And if you're quirky like you and I, you know, sometimes you've gone through your life thinking, why am I so fucking weird? Yeah. And right? <laughs> it's, it's literally been written in the stars for you and it comes through generational trauma. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I could go on and on and on and on. But for me, witchcraft is being my highest most divine version of myself having daily practices that make me feel grounded and really really 
tapping into the feminine part of me that's been hidden for so long because I've been in my divine masculine trying to be like tough and play hockey and be a firefighter and be a wrestler. And at the core of all of that, that was all kind of a facade to protect the vulnerable girl inside who didn't know who the fuck she was. And now I know who I am and I'm both. I'm feminine and I'm masculine. And that's kind of what witchcraft is supported is being yeah. you and supporting other people. So that's that in a nutshell. Man, that resonates with me so much, especially like the masculine versus feminine sort of thing. Like I felt for, I, I'm sure you're familiar with the pick me girl term. I, yep. I definitely yep. was that at one point in my life. And it was, sure. I didn't like, I didn't love the girl that was inside and I wanted to be a tomboy and, and masculine and whatever. And it, my my name is Georgia Lee Ann Milton. My initials are glam, which is so girly. And I was like, oh my gosh, I hate pink. It'll burn my skin. And now, yep. me covered in rhinestones and literally my side hustle is rhinestone. And you have to just embrace who you are and what you were always supposed to be. And it's really, it, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Your intention totally. is so, so powerful. And when you were talking about cleansing, I have to tell you about this because it's going it, to, I only a couple people in my life, like really it hits them this hard. And I don't really tell a lot of yeah. people about this, but now everybody gets to know. Yay. The night before my apartment burned down, which was October 18th last mm -hmm. year. So the night before October 17th, I had smoke cleansed my house. I was going through a really bad, like mental spot, nothing, like everything just felt like it was falling apart and I couldn't get on top of anything. I hadn't been able to get a hold on anything. And I was like, I just need to do a, a, a major reset. And I smoke cleansed the whole house. Talk about a smoke cleanse when girl, your whole <laughs> place goes up in flames and we lost everything. And, and that whole place was the smoke. There was a smoke explosion. And it was, I got to the bottom of the hill. I was only 10 feet from my balcony and I couldn't see it. Everything was wow. just completely enveloped. And I really felt like it was such a huge reset. It was such a terrible thing, but it really did. I felt like a phoenix, like rising from the ashes. I feel like my life today versus what it was a year ago is completely different and Sometimes you just have to have almost something terrible happen. Maybe it doesn't always have to be something terrible. Sometimes it can be something really great, but we need a reset and we have to cleanse ourselves of the things that we hold on to, the things that are holding us back. And I feel like I've been able to make a lot of strides. And I mean, I see a lot of hopefully myself in you. I hope that I get to be you one day. Oh, girl. <sighs> See, I think the one of the things people misconstrue is that spirituality is about love and light and witchcraft is like this dark whatever. But guess what? Without darkness, there's no light. There's no light. And witchcraft is about exploring mm -hmm. the shadow, the stuff you don't want to look at and asking the universe to release the blockages mm. to get to your highest, most divine self. And guess what? We don't get to pick and choose the niceties of how we get that hard reset. And as fucking horrible as that event was, I can see and feel such a difference in both you and Austin. Like, girl, you've had like this crazy spiritual, like external glow up. Like you were just I felt glowing. an entire transformation. In my, in my life, in, in my physical form, like in my spirituality, and especially like I've, I've been doing a lot more therapy and, and dealing with like PTSD mm. that comes with that and kind of exploring myself. And mm. my therapist reminds me constantly that I'm not even at full brain development yet. I 26 is the magic number is what she says. And she's like, in two years, you're going to look back at right now completely different. And I it's like, I'm excited totally. for that. I'm excited for the future to Good. see how things change <laughs> and, and this metamorphosis kind of happens. Cause I feel like we all go through that, especially as women and especially as women in wrestling, yeah. 
because like you said, you were 22 Mm -hmm. and didn't really know who you were. And part of your metamorphosis was getting out of wrestling. And then now did you find witchcraft during that time off or was that always there before? Witchcraft and me have been friends for a long time. (laughs) I actually bought my first tarot deck when I was like 12 and I didn't know how to use it, but I was just so attracted like magnetically to that life. I was always like taking the bus downtown Toronto to go in the goth neighborhoods to like sift through all the, the crystals and the like I didn't understand it but I knew it was part of who I was and as you get older all those aspects of you the weird girl the girl who watched the craft one too many (laughs) times kind of gets beat beaten out of you because you know you just you you want to get on with life you know you want to figure out who you are and I would say you know over the past two years which have been arguably the hardest two years of my life where I have hit bottom Mm -hmm. hard and because of my girlfriends who are, you know, uh, sister witches and, you know, real spiritual beings, they reached out to me being like, basically like, girl, we know like this is you and you're not living your most authentic life. And, you know, I kind of got back into naturally what my interests were in witchcraft. And as I kind of like started to allude to it a little bit on my mm-hmm. podcast, uh, specifically Chrissy Vane, she'd call me up. She'd be like, it's good but more, 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 more. And it wasn't until I was literally coming out and being like, yeah, I'm a witch, <laughs> that everything just seemed to align. And it's, people seem to really yeah. love it. So I'm like, all these years, it, I've been hiding. Embracing it. Yeah. It's so, it's, yeah. it's so awesome. And How has it influenced or changed, or even if it has, your approach to wrestling? Oh, Wow. I think just like anything else with professional wrestling, the best characters are always versions of you turned Mm -hmm. up to a thousand. And because I didn't know who I was, I was literally just like pushing buttons, trying to figure out who I was. So now I know who I am and I know the person that like deserves to be on a thousand in wrestling. So I will say that I believe I'm putting out the most authentic version of Taylor Wilde. And for the first time ever, I feel like people are really getting it. Like they feel it. They're excited for me. And I'm like, yay. (laughs) So I think it's affected everything. It's affected my personal life. It's affected my firefighting life. It's affected my wrestling life. And I, this is going to sound so corny, but it is the absolute honest to God truth. I am so fucking happy. Yeah. I'm I'm just so happy and I'm so happy to have the life I do the struggles make us so much stronger and they make us better people what would little Chantel think of Taylor Wilde who you are today oh it makes me want to cry it's like Mm -hmm. that's that moment in RuPaul's Drag Race where Mm -hmm. they they say you know baby you honestly Baby Chantel would be so proud of Taylor Wilde today and adult Chantel because not just for my journey in wrestling and divorces, but as a mom, you really learn that your parents were really just doing their best. Yes. And (laughs) you get to reparent yourself. Mm -hmm. through your children and you give them what you maybe didn't get and it's not from neglect or you know that your parents were really just giving you everything they can I think for the most part no parent ever wants to fail their child I feel like baby Chantel or baby Taylor Wilde is is at peace for the first time and that's the trajectory I want to ride for the rest of my life (laughs) Our parents are human and they are genuinely, for the most part, doing their best with the resources and the knowledge that they have at the time. Yep. And 100%. It all boils down to are they able to look back at themselves? Because I've been thankful enough that my mom has. Oh, wow. And yeah, which is something I, I didn't think that I would get. And now she and I are really good friends. Did you have anything like that within your life? Or is that something that you think about maybe with Taylor? 
Yeah, I definitely like both my parents. They truly did their best. And I had a good upbringing. For me, it was more emotional things. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just generational trauma, how their parents raised them and their parents raised them before them. Uh, And, you know, it's just it's being aware to what Taylor's needs are that I can see in Taylor that my mom couldn't see in me because she wasn't that type of person. Mm -hmm. Like I can see how highly sensitive Taylor is and he's probably an empath and he's probably a little bit psychic and he doesn't, he has such big emotions when things don't go his way and he's also fucking four. But um, talking to him about how he's feeling and why he feels so upset and how being sensitive is a beautiful thing and it's a power. So I actually have a really beautiful relationship with both my parents. You know, when I need to, I do have boundaries that keeps us all safe so Mm -hmm. I can be the best parent I can for Taylor. And I think for me, the the biggest thing is is the reparenting myself Mm -hmm. through parenting Taylor it's it that's been a long journey and i and truly and you'll probably feel this too gia if you do decide to ever have your own babies it really even more so just in like a really like animalistic way puts your parents behavior into perspective because you're literally just trying to survive (laughs) and you're absolutely oh my gosh when i started to go on my journey of Uh, kind of discovering who I was and, and, you know, not what's wrong with me, but what's wrong with me uh, yeah. in air quotes for people who are just listening. <laughs> I started to recognize like, Oh, my mom used to do this. Yeah, My mom used to, used to, I, I noticed this in her and I know this about her mom and, and I know she didn't get that healing with her mom. And yeah. so the fact that we're able to have this healing and I, I know can mean so much to her. That generational trauma is a whole nother thing. It's, oh, yeah. it's so deep rooted because it's, it's so much more than just your mom and your grandma and your, and your grandpa and your dad. It's generations upon generations, ancestors. It's still yeah. in your body. And I find that all so fascinating. You talked about Taylor, like you see, He's a little, he might be an empath. He might be a little bit psychic. He has these, these gifts. And we've yeah. talked a little bit about having the gift or gifts at, a little bit. Yeah. Can you talk to me about what gifts you see in yourself? It was really healing for me to hear this, this term called being like the chosen one. Mm. And what that means is maybe you were told your whole life, you're too much you're too angry, you're too something that isn't necessarily positive. Mm -hmm. And it's because you're the first one in your family who can really take this subjective look at, okay, everything is fucked up. (laughs) Like (laughs) emotionally, there's substance abuse issues, there's divorce, there's, you know, there's estrangement and you're too much because you're the first one that's pushing against it Mm -hmm. and you're going, nope, this shit ends with me and I'm the one that's going to do the work. And that sounds exactly like what you've gone through and what your childhood was like and all these big feelings you had that weren't supported. So I feel like, you know, Taylor might have a little bit of that in him too. You know, I'm doing the work, but, you know, his generation is still going to do the work too. Oh, yeah. I fancy myself an intuitive and an empath and my empathic I feel things in my body and I just get like intuition now that's gotten stronger over time and it allows me to read tarot for other people and it seems like I have a really high accuracy and I started doing it for myself but you know why I call it spicy psychology is I can also draw a line Mm -hmm. around how that probably developed so I had one parent who didn't feel emotionally safe to me. So I had to learn how to read the room to make sure I kept that parent as stable as possible to protect myself. Mm -hmm. That's how empathy works. So Mm -hmm. you've taken that trauma and you've taken that into every romantic relationship, every friendship and how you function in the world. So it's a curse and it's a blessing. So 
we can call it intuition and we call it witchcraft, but we can also call it trauma. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, my skills are definitely empathy, intuition, and it really helps me actually in my firefighting job. Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah, like, sure, I carry a lot of weight, but because of my witchcraft and my rituals, I have a ritual for when I get off work and I've had to deal with some really horrible mm -hmm. stuff, be it death, be it whatever. I burn a candle. I have some thoughts for that person. I lock them up and I put them in a box in the back of my head. And it's not that I'm not remembering or I'm blocking it out. I'm just compartmentalizing. Yeah. And I think the veil is really thin between someone like you and I and someone who is homeless and on drugs. Mm -hmm. No one wakes up in the morning and thinks, I want to be so fucking high that I might die. Nobody. No. And it, like knowing what you've gone through, knowing what I've gone through, the difference between us and them is we had support. Mm -hmm. We had money. Mm -hmm. We had, but that's, it's literally all support. Like that's, that's financial, emotional, mental, physical, like you a safety need net. support, a safety net. These people maybe started with nothing, had no one, then had some shit cards dealt to them, maybe developed mental illness, maybe had undiagnosed mental illness mm -hmm. and they are literally just surviving. And I give them the utmost respect and my greatest care because at the core that someone's baby and yes still you know, I, a person still a human being yeah. no matter what and i know you get annoyed by beggars and some of them are hustlers some of them are living better lives than us some of them are but... carnies just like wrestlers <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i would say that's i would say uh intuition and empathy are probably my strongest skill sets but that being said they're also like they're a real curse because i can't turn them off and yeah. I feel things really deeply and I get socially really burnt out quick if someone is in a low vibration mm -hmm. or I can feel that they're fucking not good people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, yeah, so. I feel that like getting the social burnout, like it, yeah. you have your, your extrovert out and on and up and she's there and she's entertaining <laughs> and she just gets drained and then you yeah. get home and it's it is like the roller coaster it's it's i've been up here for so long i've got to go back down here and now i'm i don't want to talk to anybody for a little bit i need to keep to myself and and having that balance totally you reminded me of something i did not have this question on my list but i wanted to ask <laughs> you about it um okay you said rituals you have a ritual yes. after you get off of work and and for that person that's super special and i i love that do you have any special rituals before, after you wrestle or, I mean, you talked about it a little bit after work. Do you have any before work that you do or just everyday things? So before I wrestle, I used to put headphones on, listen to music and zone out. Now the way we film is really chaotic. So sometimes you're like figure out your match all the way to the rings. So. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> There's uh -huh. not so much time for that. Every day at the hotel before I go to the venue, I read my cards just like I do every morning. I bring sage spray with me on the road because my firefighter type A personality cannot allow myself to burn incense or sage in a hotel room because if those alarms go off and it's because of me. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, and I, rightfully so. I'm going to I'm gonna have some problems with myself. And then I do some brainstorming about what I want my character to be in, in like the pre-tapes and in the ring and the story I'm trying to tell, which is something I never did before because I was – didn't know who I was, but I knew I was an mm -hmm. athlete. So all I had to concentrate on was the wrestling, but everything else got really lost. And it's part of my journey and my personal development to really get in front of that camera and tell my story because I do feel like I have an interesting story. Like I feel like I'm a different character and I really want to give that character time and space and energy. Yes. So I don't have any post ritualistic wrestling stuff because I'm so fucking tired. <laughs> Just, I like to just <laughs> literally go back to the hotel room and be quiet because uh -huh. I, I'm done. By then I am done. Like just probably yeah. like you. But that that's probably all the, I, I read my cards, I do my gratitude, and then I try to figure out what I want to get across that day and how I'm going to do it. And I think that has a lot to do with, with that authenticity. Yeah. Even though it is 
who you are and turned up to a thousand, yep. it's still a character in right. a sense. Like you're not actually beefing with someone. So, yeah. but how do we get those words across? How do we get those actions, those facials across authentically? Right. Like we actually are mad at that person. And, and you have to think about, I, I think of a character as like, They've had an entire life up until this point. Right. That may, there's a reason why they're a wrestler, and it might be different from the reason why I'm a wrestler. And there's so many. It, it's a multi-dimensional character yep. rather than a writer gives you these words and you just say them. Yeah. Which uh, which you see a lot, and I totally. think that's a big difference. You're so authentic. It it, it really is is genuine. Oh, thanks, Gia. You have lived a very interesting life. Yes. You do a lot of very interesting things <laughs> and you've learned a lot of really valuable lessons. What do you think is the key to fulfillment? That can be in career, relationships, just in life. Is there a singular mindset that you approach everything with or do you approach every situation differently? So I think the biggest change for me, and it's kind of like a blanket statement, was how I think about manifestation. So I think my mindset before was always like, I can do this, I can achieve this. And Dewdrop mm -hmm. from Superstar from SmackDown, she was somebody who actually reintegrated this into my mind process it's you have to think and you have to say things and write them down as if they are happening present day so for dewdrop she was like okay i'm just getting up today and i'm getting ready to go to smackdown next week and she wasn't booked and she really did have this fast turnaround time where they literally called her up and they're like you're on smackdown this thursday wow. and so it's taking away the element of what well, could happen, it could not happen, leaving things to chance and really yeah. believing. Like, here's a little funny story and I'll make it short, but I was having a little bit of, not tension, but there was there's a lot of political upheaval right now in the Ontario indie scene because it's small, there's only so many promotions, it's really competitive. Mm -hmm. And I said to one promoter, you know what? I'm going back to TV really soon. And if you want to use me, now is the time. I had no idea when I was going back to TV. I was told that it was probably in the new year. And I shit you not, Scott called me that night. And it's because, it's not because I was saying it to make a point. Like, I really felt like I am going back to TV soon. So don't fuck around with mm -hmm. me. I got shit to do. I am busy. I oh, yeah. am going. And it. I was like, that is it. It is so powerful putting that in the universe, thinking that I am versus what I'd like to do or I maybe I'll achieve it. Like it's and that's and that's been a big game changer for me is mindset and affirmations. Yeah. Wow. If the roles are reversed, so you get yes. to answer these questions. <laughs> They're very pressing. So rapid fire, name one beauty product you can't live without. Oh, moisturizer. Oh, absolutely. It's the, it's no, the key to everything. No questions. <laughs> what is your favorite exercise? Deadlifts. Ooh, I can tell. I can tell. You got that booty. <laughs> Thanks, girl. Thanks, girl. <laughs> what is your biggest pet peeve? Disingenuous unauthentic mm. people because mm -hmm. I can feel it immediately and it drains me so badly. It's about mm -hmm. me. It's a pet peeve because it's how it makes me feel. Like it makes me cringe and my hands are getting sweaty just thinking about people being disingenuous. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Who is your celebrity crush? <laughs> uh, the first thing that comes to mind is my like longest standing celebrity crush, but I'm not interested in him anymore. But it was Mark Wahlberg for like my whole life. Ooh, I yeah. love some Marky Mark. Okay. <laughs> what is your favorite band or artist? <sighs> okay, so my all time favorite is Depeche Mode, 80s sensation, but I am like a quintessential eclectic. I love all music. I love grunge. I love anything that came out of the 90s. Pop, hip hop, R&B. I love classical music. I love Baroque music. Um, so I, there's like, 
It's an unfair question. I shouldn't ask people that question. But if I had to pick one band, Depeche Mode. I love that. <laughs> Do you have a secret vice, like drinking a glass of wine in the shower? And if yes, what is it? It used to be drinking a glass of wine in the shower. <laughs> but homegirl's sober now. <laughs> um, I don't... So, like, when I say vice, I always think it's either something a bit taboo or something that you don't tell people that you do. But I don't have anything anymore because I'm yeah, you're like an living open book. it all out there. Yeah, so I, I'm going to have to say pass. I don't have okay, hey, that, honestly, she has no secrets. We love that. Yeah, no secrets. <laughs> what wrestler has the best entrance music? Ooh. I'm gonna have That's to. That's a hard it. one. Stone cold, because when that glass breaks, oh, it's unmistakable. <laughs> it's unmistakable. And you can't yeah, hear cold. any glass shattering without going din it, din it, din it. Totally. What is your drink of choice? Coffee. Oh, at a girl. Yeah. What was your <laughs> most embarrassing moment in the rain? So I know I'm gonna regret this. I haven't had anything really that embarrassing happen up until actually i'd say the most embarrassing for me was when i debuted after 10 years of retirement and going back to wrestling peak covid no audience and you know you just draw so much off the energy that you could do things a little like peppier than you normally would be able to and i rolled into the ring and i went to kip up into like my beauty shot and mm -hmm. i stacked it so hard <laughs> And it was just like, I knew everybody was watching and it was so like, wah, wah, wah. That was probably my most embarrassing Yeah, the yeah. First time that I, I was like, that, I, uh, I, I, that might, I that felt might that. count. Okay. <laughs> so this is finish the lyric. And this one is, it, it's going to be a pretty easy one for you. Okay. All I ever wanted. All I ever needed is here in my arms <laughs> yes Gia very good yes I love it I had to I had to <laughs> perfect Just nailed loop it loop it back around thank you so much Gia I've had so much fun this was great I'd love just getting to talk to you any, any chance I get well that's it season four has finished that's a wrap and what a way to do it with my girl impact wrestling interviewer knockout extraordinaire gia miller i hope you all enjoyed everything that wild on brought you this season we got down with wrestling witchcraft and we brought you wildness every single wednesday stay tuned because season five is coming back wilder weirder and more wonderful and i'll think of extra alliterations to add on to the W train. But until then, I could not, would not be able to do this podcast without my badass punk rock girl band, The Wild On Team. My right-hand woman, my producer and editor, Rochelle Duras. Everything that I need done on the interwebs. My marketing specialist, Madison Golshani. And our sweet baby angel who sings the Wild On theme song, Sam Smith. Until next season, season five, keep calm and wild on.